Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to answer to the question, how can I tell if my child has separation anxiety? So let's define what separation anxiety is. Separation anxiety is anxiety that is caused by the separation of the child from the main carer or the key person and is the expectation that something negative will happen once away from the main carer. Separation anxiety is the most common kind of anxiety uh, in children and is a very natural and normal uh, stage of development in children. So most children, if not all children, will go through a phase of separation anxiety. Separation anxiety is then a natural stage of development in children and it usually starts when the child has grasped the concept of object permanence. Uh, object permanence means that the child has understood that when an object goes out of sight, it still exists. Before this phase, uh, the child uh, will uh, believe that when uh, an object disappears, it just dis disappears for from existence. So they will not have an interest in that object or that person anymore. Uh, after they grasp the concept that when mommy goes away, mommy still exists <laughs> and mommy is still uh, somewhere nearby, then they will start uh, crying for mommy and wanting mommy to come back. Uh, this may happen as soon as four months, but most typically it happens from eight months to 12 months. Genetic factors can also contribute to separation anxiety in that uh, they may determine uh, where the propensity of a person towards anxiety. However, environmental factors uh, can have epigenetic effects in many cases. And so uh, environmental factors and the personality and attitude of the child may also have a great influence on whether the child will be experiencing uh, separation, separation anxiety and in what degree and for how long. So what are some of the signs, some of the behaviors that parents may observe in their children that may be indicative of separation anxiety? First, displaying distress and following the key person, the parent, around. Another sign to look for is when children start complaining about stomach aches and headaches and feeling dizzy, um, especially before they need to be separated from their main carer or when the separation is mentioned. For example, if a child needs to go to school and every day uh, or very often before going to school starts lamenting of a stomach ache or if the evening before school is mentioned and the child laments they have a stomach ache, this can be a sign of separation anxiety. Then you have three main phases uh, of behavior uh, that come with separation anxiety. And one is protesting, protesting by crying uh, nonstop. The second phase and so second behavior is despair. Uh, in this phase, the child will probably not cry anymore or be much more quiet and they will just withdraw uh, in an area and refuse to take part to any activities, refuse everything that you propose to them. Uh, and then for children that, for example, need to stay in a hospital for a long time or they need to be away from the main carer for prolonged periods of time, um, in time they may, they may look completely fine, however they may um, have reached the stage of detachment, which means they have kind of detached their feelings from their main carer uh, because they know they will not see the main carer for a long time. This is very rare, however. Other behaviors that parents may observe and that are 
quite common are uh, nightmares about separation, uh, fear of being alone, refusal to sleep alone, needing to touch uh, the main carer while they, they sleep, for example, and waking up and being upset if they can't touch uh, the main carer. Then a very interesting pattern of behavior about separation anxiety occurs when children start going to an early year setting. Uh, some parents will say, my child was fine on the first day, on the second day, and then we went there for the third day on Wednesday and she started crying and she refused to go. Did they do something to her? Uh, is the place too scary, etc. Uh, usually, uh, this is a very common pattern uh, and usually it occurs because the child is very happy to go to a new place and play with the toys, play with other children for a day or half a day. And then maybe they will be happy to go there the day after because, well, it's a fun place. Uh, mommy and daddy are taking me to a fun place for a few hours and then they'll come back. But then when the child starts to realize that this is going to be a regular thing, they will be, uh, they will be leaving their parents every day to go to the setting. That that is when uh, the separation anxiety starts because they realize that oh i need to go to the setting every day and uh, today for example i don't want to go but i still have to go i will have to go every day and the same happens after a week so um, if a child has separation anxiety behaviors uh, on the first day or second day or third day of the week and then they feel fine until the end of the week, then they go home for two days, for the weekend. When they come back to the kindergarten the second week, they may display similar, if not the same signs of separation anxiety on Monday. Um, some children will have this kind of cycle every week for even three or four weeks before uh, before they, uh, they, they go, get over the uh, separation anxiety phase. And this will repeat every Monday because the children have gone back home, they have got used again to staying at home with mommy and daddy, uh, and then when they go back to the setting, they realize again, oh, this thing is, it, it is starting again. We need, I need to go to that place again every day. Uh, so it's about how children reali realize the patterns in which uh, they will need to separate from their carer. Uh, so if your child has uh, or your students have this kind of uh, behavior or these kinds of behavior or some of these behaviors, these may be signs of separation anxiety. I will be uploading an, um, another video about methods to cope uh, with separation anxiety. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.